This is Bob Latchman. I'm not bitter, just better. Not bitter, bitter, just just better. better. Your Your new Everton Everton podcast. podcast. Okay, we're going to have a little look at the upcoming game against Aston Villa at Goodison on Saturday. It'll be good to go home, won't it, after that? It will be after the beer in that shed. Yeah, it will. Two hours last night. Uh, The derby behind us now. We've got to look forward. Uh, and this game of Goodison on Saturday against Villa, I think, is now taken on the mantle of being the most important game of our season. Yeah, it's a good chance to set things straight. If we get a win and Liverpool lose, we're no worse off. Yeah, that's right. And obviously, you know, we're looking at confidence issues now. We're looking at the morale of the crowd going down, we're looking at the morale of the team going down. I think, you know, the, the instant uh, cure for that is to go out and beat Aston Villa and beat them convincingly. Uh, what you don't want is to, you know, get beat by a team who haven't really been doing that well this season uh, and the morale to drop even further. So, let's look at the fixture from last year. Uh, Villa went up. Yeah, it was quite a, quite an incident-filled game last year from what I can remember. They went one up after two minutes with a goal from Ben Teke. We managed to... Uh, this was at the time when Ben Teke was on fire, though, wasn't he? Was, when, he when he was, was really banging game, them in, yeah. yeah. Um, we managed to get one back with Anna Chibi, who's obviously now playing for West Brom, or not playing for West Brom, as the case may be. Well, he's playing second half for West Brom against us and doing very well. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Uh, so, and that was in the 21st minute. Uh, three minutes later, Gabby Agban who, I'm going to say it, I just can't stand him. <laughs> I've never been able to... I, I just, Villa, Th- there's I, a long history of Villa players who we don't like. And uh, he, he's just one of them. He is. He's got a very annoying face. Yeah, so uh, he put them 2-1 up. Um, we had to wait until the 61st minute, sorry, 69th minute. Oh no, sorry, they went, they went 3 1 up. They went, did they did go, we were 3 yeah, we were 2 down, yeah. Uh, so Ben Teke again. Ben Teke scored again, and we managed to get another one back through Fellaini, who's obviously uh, playing down the road. Or, or not, not playing. <laughs> or not. Um, in the 69th minute, Fellaini got one back, 3 2, and then. It was like kind of backs to the wall for them, and we managed to scrape an equaliser in the 93rd minute. Again, our uh, Afro haired friend or former friend, uh, Fellaini, with an equaliser 3 3 in February last year. So, the only thing we can garner from that then is their three goal scorers are all probably going to play on Saturday, and our three goal scorers are definitely not going to play for us well, on Saturday. Well, definitely not for us, no. Uh, so, yeah, so three all. Uh, more recently, down at their, uh, at, at their grounds. Villa Park, as it's known. Yeah, Villa <laughs> yeah. Park, yeah. Did you not remember that? It, it's a difficult one to remember that, isn't it, when you're trying to think of Aston Villa's grounds. You know, have they changed their name to maybe the sponsor? No, it's still Villa Park, John. Yeah, OK. Um, was it a different story? Uh, I, I, from what I remember, I remember watching this game, and it was a crap first half, no real... Invention or anything, uh, nil nil. I think it was possibly the first time we wore the new yellow and blue kit. I think it might have been. I th- I, yeah, and remember we struggled in the first half, which was we didn't think we would because the season before when we went to Villa was our best performance of the, the season, wasn't it? Where we absolutely ran them yeah, off in the first the half. scored a screamer. Um, uh, but as you say, yeah, we struggled in the first half, and it was one of those games where you know you thought, mm, you know, maybe we might not get anything from this, and uh, a substitution changed the game. Yeah, and this is. You know, this is why we sometimes defend Leon Osman because sometimes he does have his merits and he, he can change a game. And he really did in this game. He, he managed to um, provide an assist for Lukaku to score. Who won't be playing at the weekend? No, and uh, score one himself. He possibly might be playing at the weekend. He might be. I'd have thought he would be. I think he probably will. He looked bright when he came on. Or oh, brightish. Yeah. Not so dull when he came on last night. Um, so, yeah, there's a chance he'll play, I think. 2 0. We run out winners of 2 0, and we, we just hope we can do the double over them. Uh, we really need to. We really need to. And we would like to because we hate Villa. Yeah, uh, because we hate Villa, yeah. Um, but more importantly, we need, th- we need the three points now. If we want to um, get our season back on track, as I said, they're in 11th position, 
You steal that's my that's a bit I usually do. Oh, you're you steal them you're done now. Go on, go on then. That that's not me my bit that. Go on, where are they in the league then, Mark? They're eleventh. Funny 11th you should say that they are, yeah. Um yeah, obviously looking at the game on, on Saturday as we're going into that, uh Villa, I suppose uh, looking at the the progression of the season, it, I think they're probably doing about as expected. They were poor last season, weren't they? But as we all know, they had a very young team under Lambert. Uh, so far this season, just past the halfway point, uh, they're sitting in 11th, which I think they probably would have taken. Uh, well, as we said last last week, though, 11th, they're still, you know, we, we said last week about that top, the bottom half of the table, they're still three points off the bottom half. No, there's six points. Six points six, off the sorry, six points six off points between the relegation places. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So I think uh, whoever it is, Palace in 18th or whoever on 18 points, fill it on 24 points at the moment. Um, and, you know, they're sort of motoring along. Well, not motoring along, but sort of, you know... Plodding. Plodding is the word that I was looking for. Um, they have been without Ben Teche uh, for a, a sort of a large chunk of the season through injury. He came back a couple of weeks ago. Um, they've got that sort of three-pronged attack back into place now of your mate, Gabby, uh, Agbong Lahore, uh, Ben Teche and uh, Vyman, who's a decent little busy player, isn't he, who, who sort of plays up there. Uh, and I think those three, you know, last season at Anfield, they tore Liverpool apart. And then, you know, a couple of weeks ago at Anfield, looked good in, you know, in the first half against Liverpool as well, didn't he? Until like Bong Lahore went off injured and uh, when he was tuning up. So, I mean, they have got a certain danger up front, you know, and uh, they are looking a better side than last year. Uh, my man to watch, I'm going to go for Ron Vlaar. He's a Dutch international that they have at centre half, and he's a bit of a beast, really. A uh, big, strong player. So we're we, we're really hoping that um, you know there were talks about Traore being fifth to, to make the bench for the derby. Didn't quite make it. Do you think he might make it in time? Uh, well, I don't know, but we're going to need somebody up there. Vla is a decent player. He's a decent centre half, a really decent centre half. You don't become a Dutch international for nothing. Well, there's Johnny Eitinger, but yeah, okay. Um, but you know he's a, he, you know he's a, he's a player who knows what he's doing. So we're going to need somebody up front who causes him problems. Basically, is that Stephen Naismith? I'm not too sure. So we could do with Traore possibly at least being an option from the bench. Yeah. So the, the other options that we could look at again, something that we've talked about a lot, is Morales going up top again. And, uh, I would say that would be more of an option if De La Feu is fit. However, it's looking like De La Feu is probably more likely for the Spurs, Spurs game, game. I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do we think Coleman's going to be back? Uh, from what I know, it was touch and go whether he was going to be ready for last night. So I would imagine it'll be touch and go again for Saturday. Maybe a little more touch than go, perhaps. But I don't know. It's going to be a late fitness test. Let's wait and see. Um, as we mentioned before, I would suggest that we'd probably see Hibbert come into the team uh, if, if Coleman's not fit for this game. It's going to be a very different test, or is it? You know, the, the quality of those Liverpool forwards um, is going to be very different from Benteke and Ag- Agbon Lahore, but it's the same kind of mould, isn't it? A uh, pacey what, pace. It's, it, it's, a, it's a similar setup, as you say. We had, you know, last night when you looked at it, we had you know Sterling... Sturridge and Suarez running at us. Them, these three are going to be running at us as well if they're all fit. I'm not sure if Agbong Lahore's fit at the moment because he, he did. He went off injured in that game against Liverpool, so I'm not sure whether he's back. The other option is Grant Holt, who I would much rather see play against us because he's got less pace than me. <laughs> well, yeah. Which is slow, let me let me tell you. Um, but there are other new sign in, in, uh, possibly coming in as well. Uh, who are we willing to with a lot? Ryan Bertrand. Decent left back. It's a good sign of for Aston Villa that you know it really was. Uh, I rate Ryan Burton. I think he's a very good left back, uh, and it gives them a little bit more sort of experience. I would say, even though he's a Ryan Burton, he, he's been around for years, but he probably hasn't got that many games under his belt in the Premier League. But he's come from a big team. He's come from a big club. He's come from playing with experienced players, uh, so we'll give them a, something a little bit extra. I think. Um, Fairly decent in midfield. Fabian Delph, who I think we talked about earlier on. Good box to box, good engine on Yeah, I think he was my man to watch, wasn't he, when we played them away? Um, You know, so, yeah. I mean, I I I, think they'll all be raring to go and to make make things right more than anything. I think the Blues will be up for it. I think Villa might 
fancy the chances against us, you know, at the well, weekend. I think they probably think we're on the ropes a little bit. But, you know, Everton, it's hard watching Everton sometimes, and they do let you down at, at sometimes at the wrong time, but they always come back out fighting. And I think that's it's going to be one of them. It's going to be a bit of a rallying job. We'll come back. I am worried about, you know, where goals are going to come from. I personally would like to see Morales play through the middle. Um, but I think we'll have enough to probably get three points. Obviously, we're talking on Wednesday. Uh, the transfer deadline's on Friday. You know, we couldn't possibly... We could possibly get another face in by then who could be up top. So could Aston Villa. <laughs> yeah, so could Aston Villa. So we're just speculating on... I think he'll go with Morales up top. Traore to come in on the bench. Uh, and I, I think he might even drop Naismith down. Uh, play him, but p- drop him down onto the right. Yeah, it could be a case of, you know, Osman comes in, you know, maybe your Pienaar on the left, Osman on the right, or maybe Naismith on the right, depending on how... You know, at the minute, because we're so close to the game last night, we're not sure, you know, who's trained today, who's, if, even if there was training today, who's got little pulls or, you know... So, it's difficult to predict the team, Um I think at home we should have enough. If we were away at Villa Park, I'd be worried. Yeah, going away after a defeat like that, it'd be, it's good to get back on home soil and just get behind the boys again. Yeah. Um, obviously, that, obviously like, we're, we're all hurting, but the best way we can show our support is go out there and get some Ali Ali on the go. I and, can't, uh, and it's been quite a good listen recently, and we need... It, you know, I, I hate this saying, and I don't really want to say it, and I know Aston Villa say it, but we need a 12th man in a way on this Saturday. We need Gladys Street and the rest of the ground to get behind the Blue Boys and let's just go and have a go at them and let's smash them out of sight. Yeah, I'll have that. So what's your prediction on your man to watch? Well, I've said, I gave you man to, ma- man to watch. Oh, yeah, you've got Ron Blah. I want to say a big, I want to say a big four 0 to Everton, but I think I don't think we'll have that many goals in the team just because the the bit of the striking crisis at the moment. So I'm going to go two 0 Everton. I would have, snap your hand off for that right away, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I just I just hope we can bounce back. That's more than anything. If we scrape a two one, play some good football, but battle and show some pride, I'd, I'd have that. Uh, I'd have whatever win as long you know we just. We, we, we do need to show that we are, uh, we mean business again because we, last night we kind of rolled over and that's not us anymore. You know, we don't go to clubs and we don't let, we don't roll over t- for teams anymore. So we need to stay in touch with the top six. I think United have got a really good chance of overtaking us if we don't start picking back up again. Um, obviously Tottenham can go, uh, go a few points ahead of us tonight. Just get back into the winner and the winning ways. That's what we need to do. And then you know you, we've seen it in previous seasons. Second half of the season is usually when we come strong. There's no reason why we can't be filled at the weekend, and then we can't push on and go on the run and start putting some more points on the board and putting pressure back on Spurs, United. I know you know United are still behind us, but Spurs, United, Liverpool, and, and pushing back up the league again. Just, uh, just I mean. The importance of this fixture, as you said, is our most important game of the season. Imagine losing this and then going into Spurs. Yeah. That Spurs game. It's just, it, it, we can't do it. We need to get three points um, and just put pressure. Put pressure on the top four, not five and six. Exactly. So we need this at the weekend. So come on, Blue Boys. Um, if you've listened to this, the entire podcast today, thank you very much uh, for staying with us through. Uh, nearly an hour and 40 minutes of what was on the whole probably the most depressing podcast we ever had to do following the Derby result. Uh, if you're listening on our YouTube channel and you've just heard our, our little um, preview to the Aston Villa game that would have been on YouTube, then uh, you know, give the whole podcast a chance. Go and have a listen to it on SoundCloud or, or iTunes or whatever. It wasn't our happiest of podcasts, but you know, we have to deal with what we're dealt with, don't we? Yeah. This is the Not Bitter, Just Better Everton podcast. If you haven't already, go and like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash EFC, Not Bitter, Just Better. Or you can find us on Twitter at Just Better EFC.